Welcome everybody to our Bay Area Housing Market Town Hall. Before we start, I want to remind everybody, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and we do have tons of videos, so be sure to check them out. Well, what we're going to talk about today is uh, we're going to talk about the Bay Area employment and also um, the current housing market stats and offer status, the interest rate hikes, inflation, construction, and then of course the Ukrainian war discussion uh, with our buddy, realtor Joe Polyak in San Mateo. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing a little bit about what's going on with our employment right now. Now, National Association Housing Builder, they actually had just um, reported about this surprising job growth. We had added 678,000 jobs in February, and our unemployment rate actually came down to 3.8%. As you see that historically, the unemployment rate, of course, under four, and it, it was really scary that we've never seen such a high unemployment rate when COVID just started. But it's such a great news to see that we are going back to almost pre-COVID um, level. So this is absolutely a great news and our employment is definitely doing really well right now. And because of that, um, you guys probably have heard Apple, Google, Microsoft, and a lot of tech giants are actually mandating their employees to go back to the office now. Um, for example, Google now is asking that um, their employees to go back at least three days a week starting April 4th. And Apple beginning April 11th, they're going to go back one day a week and it will jump to three days a week on April 23rd. And Facebook, I know in the beginning, Facebook was really big on letting their employees to work remotely permanently, but now they're asking their employees to come back to work on March 28th. But there are some companies that are still um, talking about that. They allow their employees to be able to work remotely, for example, Twitter and Reddit and also Amazon. They're giving them their employees a lot of flexibility still. But we do see that some of these Bay Area tech firms are requiring their employees employees to come back and work in the office, even though it's part-time, but it does mean that they need to be around. So one thing is that I know we've been talking a lot about California exodus before, and uh, uh, we have hearing a lot of people saying that we're losing population, and especially people from out of state, they really believe that we have less and less people here, but wants to show you guys, we still have population growth. Sacramento actually has a pretty healthy population growth compared to San Jose, although San Jose and San Francisco, we are still at 0.5% and also 0.4%. And in terms of job growth, we're also doing pretty well. Greater Sacramento has been doing really well. As you know, that a lot of people um, have moved from major um, San Francisco area, Silicon Valley, going up to Sacramento. But then at the same time, the job growth in San Jose is really strong. It's at 1.1% annual growth rate, as well as San Francisco at 1% growth rate. And what that means is that we're going to start looking at the traffic. Um, this is through Bay Area Bridge Crossing's um, monthly tracker. And uh, if you look at the orange line, this is when the COVID shelter in place just started. Of course, you see that there are a lot less traffic compared to pre-pandemic. But then now in February 2022, you see that it's getting really close. It's really hitting back. And I, I'm sure a lot of you have started feeling that traffic, um, rush hour traffic is pretty bad. So um, as you see that we are starting to see a lot more people are going back to work and the remote working is probably gonna be less and less now. So what about the market stats then? Since now that we're looking at these um, numbers, knowing that the job growth as well, and also we start having more, more people required to go back to work. And we want to take a look at is our inventory, new listings. And in Santa Clara County, if you take a look at compare the January of last year, 897 units versus this year, 735 units, we do have quite a bit of drop in terms of uh, in the January um, inventory. But um, February, we actually kind of very similar to last year. It's still a little bit less, but it's pretty similar. Now in March, we're only nine days in. So um, in March, we're about one third of what we had before um, last year, March. So it looks like we are pretty much on track with the number of new listings for um, this year, March. Um, for sure that March and April and then, uh, May and June, you will start seeing more and more inventory. And in terms of the competitiveness, it's off the roof. I mean, look at this. Now we're at 17% over asking price, even though last year was really competitive. I know a lot of people were complaining, but this year, first three months has been really, really crazy. And uh, as for condos and townhouse, uh, we also see that the inventory, same thing, January is quite a bit lower than last year, but February again, it came back up. 
so coincidentally, it is also about one third of last year March um, inventory new listing. So we we do think that it's going to be starting to match back to last year's numbers. Um, and also, but even condos and townhomes. I know for a while we kept saying like condos and townhomes they're not as hot uh, of a commodity. But look at how competitive it is now. It's eleven uh, percent over asking in order to win um, the listing. All right, what about San Mateo County? They had gone down quite a bit in terms of inventory as well in January. I think everyone just had a really slow start. I would say one of the main reasons was that in 2020, December, a lot of people were home, right? They weren't really traveling. But last year, December um, in 2021, a lot of people travel. So they didn't really have the time to prepare for their um, houses for sale. During December, um, housing market update, we hacked we did talk about like we think it's going to be slower just because of the fact that a lot of sellers are probably um, traveling as well as buyers. But the number of buyers is still way outpaced compared to number of sellers. And so we do see that um, in January, we have a slow start, but then February it came right back up. And then hopefully we can catch back up in March as well. And then same thing, it's all double digits everywhere. 15% uh, over asking price, higher than any other time in 2021. As for their condos and townhomes, both months, January and February, they're both lower in terms of number of new listings compared to last year. And then um, in March, we, ha we have 51 new listing right now. We're about a quarter of what we had last year, March. Hopefully we can catch back up, although we already one third away from the end of the month. Um, and also, even though it's not double digits, but in San Mateo County, we are still seeing higher than last year's in terms of competitiveness. As for Alameda County, Alameda County, we also see um, a slight drop in January. So this is really across the board in the whole entire Bay Area. And also how hot is that in single family in Alameda County is almost 20%. That's median sales price to list price ratio, 20% over asking. And it's just um, people are still moving to, over to Alameda County. And as for the condos, we have the same data, but February actually came back a little bit faster compared to last year. And then um, even the condo and townhomes also are way more competitive compared to last year. So some real live example of how crazy it is. A few of them actually, we literally just made an offer this week. So uh, let me, maybe this one could be as an example, San Mateo. A two, one single family is not even a thousand square feet by the way, asking price is $1.3 million. They had nine offers and went over $1.7 million. So right now, if you're at $1.5 million, it cannot even get you a two bedroom, less than 1,000 square feet single family in San Mateo. You need to be prepared to go over $1.7 million. If you're looking for three bedroom, not even two bath, just three bedroom, one bath, it, it has gone over $1.9 million in San Mateo. Um, I, I don't mean to be discouraging, but it is a very, very hot market. San Mateo is a very popular area because of its location. So, um, a lot of people are also looking at Sunnyvale 94085 and 94086. As you see that, like this property, single family is a million dollar over asking easily. And I mean, a lot of homes nowadays in a really slightly better area and especially if it's move in ready, it really does. Um, so you can definitely see the number of offers increase by so much more and how aggressive people are making an offer. Um, and also 95118, this is in um, San, Jose, San Jose, West San Jose, um, 95126. These are Cambrian area and um, they also had gone up quite a bit. I mean, nowadays, I know there are a lot of buyers ask me, so on average, how many hundreds of thousands of dollars do I need to offer above asking? It really depends on what is their asking price. So these asking price, they are relatively low, 1.2, 1.3, and it did um, go up about $500,000. And then we also have other with this one is a single family in West San Jose, 1.625. They did get um, three preemptive offer actually, and went up to 2.35. It was on the market for four days and it was gone. So just to show you guys is that, yes, the market is still really, really, really strong. And this is not last month data. This is this week or last week data, um, we have been really busy making offers and it is tough out there, but just be patient. Don't be discouraged. I know I can, it's easy said and done, but then it is tough. And then your realtor will be working with you along the way and continue to advise you the best. And one thing really stand out from 
you know, because you cannot even do a comparable analysis, right? You know the appraisal value, but it's a matter of how aggressive you are uh, in order to win that property, knowing that your appraisal value most likely is going to come below right now. So um, the the relationship your realtor have with a listing agent is really important because it, um, hopefully they are able to give you a counter offer or the listing agent feels that your realtor uh, works really hard and they are willing to work with your realtor more on, on your offer. So be sure to pick your realtor correctly. <laughs> All right, what about the mortgage rates? Last month, we looked at the mortgage rates, high balance conformance 3.75, jumbo 30 years is 3.375. And this month has gone up to 4% for conforming 30 years and jumbo is 3.5. I know some people thought that, hey, I thought the interest rate dropped. Yes, it did drop uh, last week, but it came back up. So unfortunately, it didn't last long with that drop and it came right back up to now at 3.5 for jumbo loan 30 years fixed. And uh, as well as all the mortgage rates projections from Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, Mortgage Bankers Association, National Association of Realtors, um, I have mentioned it for the last two, three months now that they will adjust their projections sooner or later. And sure enough, they have. And as you see that um, the, uh, the bracket in here talks about like their projections has gone up by uh, 30 basis point, 40 basis point, um, and even 50 basis point from Mortgage Bankers Association because of the inflation numbers because of Fed, uh, Federal Reserve had talked about rate hikes and all that stuff. And of course now, um, and also the war. So as you see that our average now, last few months we've been talking about is about 3.7 by 4Q 2022. Now it has gone up to 3.85 for 4Q 2022. So understand that these projections, they can change because some people will think that this is it, but um, every two, three months, I will show you that how their projections actually can change. And then we talked about, of course, is the inflation. Now inflation just came out with a number, 7.5%, really high. Uh, as I mean, I know we all can feel it, but this is what I, you know, sometimes people thought that, okay, the in inflation is really high. That's why we're going to in uh, increase the rate hikes. And then some people thought that because of the Ukraine war, the Fed might not increase the rate hikes. But um, it actually, they are going to continue. And most likely, I think it was uh, March 15, right? That's when they are going to um, announce the rate hike. And, uh, but they do think that Federal Reserve may not increase as many as other organizations have projected before. They thought they were going to, um, most likely this year, they're going to increase six to even seven times on the rate hike. But now they think that it's going to be fewer than six. We'll see what will happen. And even Federal Reserve, they adjust, right, according to the economy. And Morgan Stanley actually had urged the U.S. Federal Reserve on Tuesday to make a more cautious approach to raising interest rates as Russia's invasion of Ukraine spurs already skyrocketing global inflation. So um, we do think that the interest rate hike it may not be as much as we had expected, but it will still continue to go up. And now we talked about inflation, but want to remind everybody the CPI index does not include housing unit sales like the real estate prices because those are considered investments, not consumption items. So the energy definitely had increased quite, quite a bit. And I'm sure for a lot of us have seen like food had cost a lot more and even lumber. And we're going to go over that in a little bit. And one thing I thought was interesting to see is that the rent increases uh, historically has been greater than the inflation most years, because a lot of people always wonder if uh, the inflation has gone up so much, will the rent price go up accordingly? Um, historically, it has been greater than the inflation. And that is also one of the reasons why multifamily market has gone up so much because the investors are expecting that the rent price is going to go up quite a bit. And if you have watched one of my previous videos for five units and plus multifamily, the way you value those properties is based on net operating income, which means if you have a higher uh, rental rate, and then you, your, your building can make more money, it can increase your property value by quite a bit. So um, we can talk more about that on another session. <laughs> and uh, construction costs. I just started my remodeling. And um, now with a drawing, sometimes if you do a bigger project, just to do a drawing could take one or three months to do the drawing. Then you have to submit to, um, for permit approval. And that can take three to six months. For me, uh, we started this, I think, around August last year, and then our permit didn't get approved until um, February. By that time, the lumber cost, it went from about $500 around there, went up to $1,300, more than double of the price of the lumber. 
So what happened was that, you know, the contractor, whatever they had quoted us last year, it doesn't really apply anymore. And so now our construction costs have gone up 15 to 20% just because of the fact that we were waiting for the permit approval. Um, so where I live right now, the permit process is so long. So just thought to let everybody know, especially if you're thinking about a bigger project and if you want, you want to uh, start some project, you should start as soon as possible. And, uh, and then also because of lumber costs has gone up and the number of um, single family building has, has slowed down as well. All right, and then natural gas, because um, White House, the President Biden had just banned the import of Russian oil, we have seen the effect on the gasoline. And uh, knowing that you know, US actually only uh, consume about 8% of the petroleum product from Russia, um, but Europe, they cannot ban completely Russian gas. They are slashing 66%, and which because they actually consume about 40% of their natural gas, and then 47% uh, of their oil imports and 46% of the coal imports from Russia. Mm. So this is why they can't really just completely ban it. It will have a significant impact to the Euro European countries. And so uh, European Commission President Ursula, they did say that they need to be more independent from Russian oil, coal, and gas. And um, if you look at the biggest production or producing countries in 2020 is US, Saudi Arabia, and Russia. Three of these countries accounted for 43% of the world's petroleum liquids mm -hmm. production. With that said, um, we wonder, maybe US can provide the oil and petroleum to the European country. Unfortunately, because US, um, the, the oil and gas producers, they, their export facilities are already operating at capacity, even if they want to, it's gonna take years and billions of dollars in order to do that. What will happen with the war in Ukraine? And this is when why I want to bring Joe into this conversation because Redfin, they're saying that war in Ukraine is partially to be blamed for extreme shortage of the U.S. homes. It's affecting a lot of people who don't want to sell. You know, sometimes, and I think a lot of time we talk about when we have war, we want to hold more of a physical assets instead of uh, maybe stocks that can, um, that can go down really fast. So um, I want to ask Joe, Joe, who is a top producer in the Bay Area as well in San Mateo County um, from Rise Homes. Hi, Joe. Hi, thank you well, so much for inviting me on. I really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. And one of the main reasons why I'm inviting Joe is because, um, you know, we all seen the, all this tragedy from all the Ukrainians. Oh, I don't even know how to say it. Every night when I watch the news, I cry because of the fact that it's just a, such a scary time. And I know, Joe, you have families in Ukraine right now. Um, yeah, so I was, uh, uh, my family came from Ukraine. Um, my mom actually it came here seven months pregnant with me from Ukraine. And um, so I was born here, but uh, from that was back when it was Soviet Union. But I have uh, two half sisters um, uh, on my dad's side who are still in Ukraine. One other one is uh, not in Ukraine. And uh, just a lot of other family, my uh, stepdad, um, has a lot of uh, family, his kids, everything. So, um, you know, we just, we have a lot of people and um, a lot of family, friends, a lot of people that we know in Ukraine, in uh, Kiev, Kharkov, uh, which is where a lot of the fighting is going on and um, just kind of throughout. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I just cannot even imagine how difficult it must be for them right now. I hope they're able to find, you know, a place safe. Um, do you know if they're out of Ukraine now or they're still there? Um, no, they're staying there. I mean, so I think a lot of people have uh, left. But um, as you see, one of the reasons I think that this is so, um, you know, a lot of wars happen. Uh, but I'm seeing that this is probably has become the one that's pretty central in most people's lives now, even if yeah. you don't have any connection with Ukraine. I think um, a lot has to do with uh, the resolve of the Ukrainian people and uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, um, the president, and just in general, like his leadership and all the uh, people living in Ukraine are just saying like, hey, we're, we're fighting, we're staying. So um, my sisters are, um, and, and a lot of her family, everybody is just kind of staying tight and just waiting and doing their part to help whatever they can. And um, they just don't want to leave their country. Like they just feel like, why would we leave our country? It's ours. Um, yeah. There's a lot of propaganda, uh, like state, you know, Russian TV is saying that it is, you know, overrun by Nazis and uh, that Putin is coming there to liberate the people, right, and uh, help get them out. Um, and so that's 
um, not true, uh, at least in the areas that I have family and uh, friends and people that I know, they're not Nazis, uh, we're Jewish, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us. So, um, so yeah, it's uh, a lot of them are just choosing to stay and just uh, either fight or volunteer or help out and just, yeah, and do their best. Well, I really hope that your family will be safe over there. Uh, I honestly, every time I watch the news, it's just so heartbreaking. I, I've seen like children just running away while there's grenades or um, they have rockets going above their heads. It's, it's insane. Um, and I, I think this is one of the reasons why I really want to talk to you as well. Um, you know, I know you obviously you have a personal level with this war and you're also real estate here. Uh, doing real estate over here. So has that affected your business? Um, not personally, uh, really, or I haven't really, you know, a lot of people talk about it. I don't know, um, I, I, you know, based on your point earlier that maybe uh, people's fears of this escalating and involving like NATO and the US or other countries, um, maybe people's fear of that potentially happening mm -hmm. could cause people to sit on the fence um, but me personally, my listings that I have listed for sale are still very hectic and busy and a lot of activity um, for the most part. And a lot of our buyer clients are not really um, concerned about this. And I think a lot of that is because also, you know, uh, the uh, pandemic starting a few years ago, we all thought that, oh, hey, everything's going to crash and stop. And, you know, who, who knew that the opposite was going to happen and mm -hmm. everything was going to skyrocket and people were going to be buying and selling. So I think maybe a lot of people are thinking like, oh, you know, I missed the boat that time. I don't want to miss it this time as it happens again. Yeah, you're right. Uh, even from my own experience that we had buyers who actually kind of got worried because of the war as like, oh my gosh, should we even go into the market now? On the other hand, we have other buyers like, man, this is the time we need to be in the market and hold the our assets. Um, because during the wartime, the most important thing is really physical assets. I know some people talk about gold and silver. And um, just now uh, the article talked about bond and that's something a little bit more safer. But then um, I also know a lot of investors who are moving their money from the stock market into real estate. And I don't know if you have heard anything from any of your clients as well. Um, you know, I, I think that um, per personally talking to people, I, I personally have not really heard people making any kind of di major different changes. A lot of my business is sellers are people that have to sell no matter what, war mm -hmm. or not war, it's, you know, uh, probate, trust sale, they're moving, job transfer, a lot of these things. So um, they're not, their decisions aren't changing based on this. Um, buyers, like you said, some people are like, well, hold on, maybe we should pump the brakes and see what happens. Um, but I always tell people, you know, that I talk to, um, you know, you can view this as an investment, a financial investment, but I think what's more important is to view this as a life investment. Um, you know, you're buying a house because you're thinking about where you're going to play with your family and, and pets and everything in the backyard, um, entertain people where you're going to have family dinners, Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, how you're going to remodel, have a beautiful kitchen, a life. That's the most important. And yes, obviously you want that asset to grow and not crash, right? But um, if, you know, if you're thinking about asset, then just buy investment property and stay renting. But if yeah. you're thinking about um, buying a house for yourself, then maybe forget the financial like predictions and what might happen and just focus on, hey, it's the right time for me and my family to buy a home and enjoy ourselves. Well said. I I said the same thing. It's like it's about investing in your life, your in your future. Um, when you're buying for your for yourself, I think um I see uh, some buyers they time the market too much and then wonder oh I need to buy when it comes down and stuff like that. It actually delayed their buying and then the market has already gone up so much now it's like out of their budget. But as investors, you absolutely need to be a lot more um, be uh, careful in terms of your analysis and uh, don't just speculate. I get really scared when people are buying. It's like, yeah, it's fine. I can be negative um, every month, but you you just don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you have calculated all your numbers correctly, and then you have ex different exit plans for your investment properties. Um, that, uh, that that is also one of the reasons why value adding 
um, for like, special apartment buildings. Um, it's so important because when you can add income to the property, you can add tremendous value on your apartment buildings. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for being here and talking to us. And we really, really, really wish your family will stay safe over there in Ukraine. Um, and I'm sure we'll get to work together one of these days. Thank you very much. Yeah, I really look forward to it. And um, uh, yeah, I really appreciate you having me on. This is great. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like our videos, make some comments because we're going to keep you posted on the most updated real estate news, housing market data, and also real estate tips and advice from all over the real estate industry. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.